Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. My name is Jerry Lynch. I'm with Oregon Ecology. Um, I found myself searching for a passageway one day. And that passageway goes right across the complete section of the Cascades, which I'm sitting in front of at the moment. On top of my feet. I want to make sure that everybody sees the type of things that we find in the process of research is involved. I have located a couple that's sitting here on the top of the line of peak. She's facing south. She's facing north. The middle, Cascadia Guides, a Let's production in conjunction with Alien Strand Films. happened. I'm just uh, skeptical about the abduction part of the story. To that extent, it wasn't like a visceral reality experience. It wasn't like a true memory. And that's what I had trouble with for years and years and years. Certainly, I, I shared the experience with the rest of the guys, and they might take that as remembering a real experience. But it's not. The encounter is real. I know that. While some physicists argue whether time travel is possible, theoretical physicist Carlo Rivelli thinks that time is in fact an illusion, and our reality is just a complex network of events into which we project sequences of past, present and future. Buddhists think of reincarnation as an illusion, and yet believe in it. Westerners think of it as something that might be a fact and find it difficult to believe. Westerners adopt the idea of reincarnation as a comforting idea. Buddhists are trying to get out of being reincarnated. <laughs> She's going to be coming on here shortly, but I just hope everybody had a really nice um, Halloween, right? Because I don't know if you guys saw the videos and the pictures of me and my wife. Well, yeah, we, we like we like dressing up for Halloween. We like having a good time. So that's what we do. Uh, and we love passing out candy, you know, that, and that's what we did to, to all the kids out there. We were able to get a big old, big old bowl. But you know what? There was still half a bowl left over. And guess who got it? Me. <laughs> They should have been more kids, man. Maybe next time. All right. So it's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm working on my diet. 
January 1st, 2024. Not right now. We're going to wait till Thanksgiving and we're going to wait till Christmas because I'm going to eat tamales. I'm going to eat turkey. I'm going to eat all that good stuff. And then I'm going to die, right? So I'm going to be there with Mr. Cherry Lynch. Uh, you know, uh, he's watching tonight. You know, speaking of Mr. Cherry Lynch, uh, I talked to him a little while ago. He's doing great. You know, he's getting ready to go out there and he's going to go and shoot uh, the video, the new videos for the uh, the cattle mutilation or mutilizations that are going to be out there. Man, I can't even say that word. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, so he's going out there to go do that, right? And uh, we're gonna get yourself, we're gonna get you guys a nice, uh, awesome documentary out there while he's going out there and shoot with uh, organ ufology and research uh, with Jonathan Mitchell, his son, and uh, they're all gonna go out there and film some awesome and amazing things and beautiful interviews. So if you guys haven't done this yet, please go to Alien Strand Extras on Patreon, right? We do have a Patreon. Now, I do do extra podcasts, right, that are not on here, not on this platform. You can go on there. Uh, you can actually be, there's a free one that you can see some stuff that, that happens here with everybody else, but I do have some for uh, for subscribers that pay the $5 a month. They're, they get to see extra stuff that you guys don't. Hey, but you know what? It all helps out, and, and, I'm, and I, we just got some more people that just joined up. Thank you guys for that. Every Everything helps, man, because it helps get this information disclosure on all these platforms and because it gets a little pricey sometimes. But, you know, uh, uh, everything helps. And we appreciate you guys and everybody that's standing by Alien Strand Disclosure Project, Alien Strand, for everything that we're doing here today. All right. So that last podcast that I did on Patreon was about RH Negative uh, there on Patreon. So if you guys can uh, sign up, you'll get to watch this podcast I did on RH Negative. It's about 45 minutes long, but it was a great one. Go check that out, all right? Tonight's podcast, remember, is going to be a great one. Uh, it's alien and Human Connections with Miss Nancy Times, okay? So we're, we're Tim's, I'm sorry. We're going we're gonna to get her around here in just a minute, but uh, and hers, she's going to have some amazing stories and amazing things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a lot of good things that you guys want to hear about disclosure, about people that are in close connections with extraterrestrials. So stick around for that. Also, don't forget, watch our movie The Middle on Amazon Prime. It's fixing to go away pretty soon. You know why? You know why it's going to go away soon? And you guys need to watch this film. It's only two ninety nine on Amazon Prime. It's free on Tubi TV and TCL Channel. That's that's our first documentary that we ever did uh, for uh, Alien Strand. And uh, Lynch Productions, my company, uh, we were able to throw that out there. And it's a story of Mr. Terry Lynch up there and what he found on top of Pauline Peak. But it's getting ready to go away. But you know why? I'm telling you. You know why? Because the middle two CE3 is coming out already. I already finished it. And guess what? It's going to be coming out pretty soon. Uh, I just sent one one out to Mr. Terry Lynch. He's going to actually watch it tonight, uh, and he's going to give me his insights. I might do some changes. I don't know yet, but it's pretty much done. This is going to be a great, great three-section film, okay? So there's going to be three parts to this film. All these people did a great job, an amazing job in telling their stories uh, because all they had was disclosure after they see UFO crafts and extra, extraterrestrials at times, all right? So this is what this film is about. Make sure you, you, you grab it. Remember, follow us on Alien Strand Disclosure Project. Man, you have to go there. Uh, these uh, This is for everyone, right? Uh, if you want to report a UFO or if you want to, you know, just report even we do paranormal there as well okay so go to uh, asdp-ufo.com you can actually report a ufo you can see some stuff that we have on there meet and greet the people that are uh, part of disclosure out there right so we have a bunch of folks on board that that uh, that um, actually do sponsor uh, their state for Alien Strand Disclosure Project, right? And our sister page, alienstrand.com. Go there if you want to see some really cool stuff, all right? Um, you know, this topic is, is very, it's not easy to talk about sometimes uh, because, uh, and, I, and I always tell you guys about this, that, you know, um, <clears throat> when it comes to extraterrestrials and and uh, the, the state of mind that it puts you in, right? Because it does put you in a different state of mind. Once you've been approached or once, uh, you know, that you, you get that sensation that something has happened to you, right? Or, or even at that, you know, even just by dreams or, or, or just things, special things that start happening around you, right? And then you start seeing things. You start seeing UFO crafts. You start seeing extraterrestrial uh, in different dimensions sometimes come out on your photos, on your videos, things that you are not uh, ready to see at times. But a lot of times these, these, these things happen to people for a reason. And the reason is for this, uh, this uh, 
for, for Nancy today because she's going to tell you her story and why this happened to her. And she wants to give her full disclosure out on, on what happened to her. And I want you guys to listen to this story and listen to her because she's got a lot of good things to say. Now, without further ado, without me jabbering, jibber jabber so much, let's go ahead and bring her on now, okay? Hello. There she is. Hey, how you doing today? Oh, I'm great. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Right on. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, you're on the show today. Thank you. Um, uh, and, you know, we, uh, you and I talked a little bit and then you, you, you've been chiming in on a lot of our podcasts. And then that's when I started getting to know you a little bit more. And then uh, watching your other podcasts, you know, um, can you tell our audience and the and the listeners out there as well, just the, the video and, and audio listeners, exactly how all of this unfolded and started for you? Well, <clears throat> it's happened all my life. And when I was young, I just thought I was flying around and flying around and they told me I was a little princess and we were just flying around going all these places. And they did, they used a lot of um, screen memories, you know, to uh, so I would be playful and happy and, and cooperative as they taught me things. So as I got older, you know, I just kind of like would brush it off, not really knowing what it was. And whenever I would try to talk to my mother and father about it, they would say, you've had a bad dream. And, or they'd say, oh, your imagination, you know, they really, you know, brushed it off because they probably thought it was just an imaginary friend or thing going on and I would outgrow it. But right. you can't outgrow things like this. So then when I got in my 20s, they started, extraterrestrials started showing themselves to me and it was, I had to face it. I realized this is real. This is happening to me. And I started to ask them, why me? You know, what is what is going on? Why me? And they showed me a vision of myself being born and that I had made an agreement to come here for this particular time to help humanity, to get used to the idea of extraterrestrials and to help it in ascension and to just help people understand what it is, what's happening, what their agendas are, the misconceptions and all that kind of thing. So they've kind of pretty much groomed me all my life. And they always told me, you'll know when the time is right to start doing what we want you to do. And that is to educate people because they wanted me to experience everything about it so that when I discuss it with others, I know firsthand, you know, what it's like to be scared. I know what's firsthand how you have to wonder why you and all these different things um, they always make sure that I experience everything so everything kind of makes sense now my whole life was has been a just a living learning journey up until now and I am so thrilled to be who I am and I've looked at myself within and I know who I am and I know that we have a beautiful, bright future ahead of us if we allow them to come into our lives. Well, let me ask you this. <clears throat> On When this first started, how old were you? And and at the same time, how did you know if these uh, entities were friendly or was it a friend or foe? I mean, did, did you it know? It was always a friend. And they can change their image. Um, they can change the scenery around you. You know, so it was always making me feel special and making me feel loved and wanted and and showing me um, different things. Uh, but I was a toddler and that's when I really remembered it. And I, you know, at times I would get scared and I think at times I was OK with it. But right. they can they pick up on what you're vibrating, whether you're you know, they pick up on emotions so if you're fearful or scared or whatever, they pick up on that. So they can put you in like a trance state so that you're still learning things and you're still doing things, but it's really your subconscious is really doing all the things. So as I got older, they would give me more conscious time so that so I could piece everything together. And they're very patient. They have been very patient with me 
you know, because it took me a long time to understand it all, you know, and to just accept it. I mean, the main thing is accepting it. And I do. I mean, now, as, as an older, uh, as, as you grew older, you know, in your twenties and thirties or whatever, yep. uh, do, did you uh, actually get to see them as far as. Oh, like yeah. a- oh yes. Face to face. Yes. And touch them and see what their skin feels like. And, they feel kind of like a dolphin, um, and I've heard, I've heard they're kind of cold feeling. Um, and the last time that I did have face to face and touched uh, my female, um, she's like my ET mother. She's the one that comes to get me ever since I was a little person, a little toddler. She's always been with me, and she's wherever she takes me on craft or wherever, she's always with me. And then when I get on craft, I'm around other beings that are not exactly like her. She is a female gray and she's almost my height, but I am taller than her and she's just very loving. And I don't know how old she is, but I assume she's older than me because of the fact that I've been with her so long, you know, when when you experienced your, your, your time on or going to the craft, how, how did this take place? What was when was your first time actually going into the actual craft and knowing that you were in a different place other than on the ground of earth, you know what I mean? Like on your feet on the ground, you were on an actual ship or something like that. Exactly. Well, it, the way it would happen is that I would sense their presence, something about them inside me. I always know. And for a long time, I would not open my eyes and they may have told me not to open my eyes because they wanted things they want things to be as easy as possible. So, but what they would do is they would, my body would start vibrating all over from head to toe, toe to head and vibrating. And then it's like, you, you just kind of like start floating up, but then they would just grab my hand and take me. So now I don't know. I think technology may have changed a little, but they do. They vibrate you at a higher frequency. And when we br- vibrate, we get out of the 3D frequency because in 3D, we wouldn't be able to go through walls or through doors or up the mm-hmm. ceiling. And I've always been able to look down when I'm going up and see my bed empty. So um, wow. basically, they're just changing my frequency and then they're carrying me up to craft. And a lot of times they'll use the smaller grays to come down, which is what my female, I call her my female uh, ET mother. Um, She's one of the smaller grays and they're the ones that usually do the back and forth stuff. And the taller grays and the other bands are always up in craft. Right. We well, I, I, and that's strange. Uh, we we have a uh, an actual Facebook user says my stepson and I have the feeling of calm over us. So they they might be experiencing the same things as you as well. You know, like a calming sensation when they're around. Um, now, when 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 you when you say the frequency and it changed, um, do you feel any? Do you hear any kind of humming? Any buzzing in your ears? Anything while this is happening? I don't know. I, it's hard to explain. Everything changes. Um, it's like you focus in on the vibration and you just sort of like you're at one with it. And now I'm, I am at a higher frequency and it's not so much that they, I just vibrate. It's now it's like the, when the minute they come, I know they're there. And next thing I know, I'm standing up holding hands with my feet female ET mother and you know and again it depending on you know how they catch me my type of emotion that I'm showing if it's you know normal and stuff then it's okay but I do know um if it, for example I was in Mexico uh in September and my son and I uh he has experiences too and they t- he was supposed to get us down to Mexico at San Jose del Pacifico, which is up in the mountains. And they wanted us to see all of the people there. And there's a dying um, uh, race there. And they wanted us to see, and they wanted us to see the examples of like how important um, plants and nature is, how important water 
um, all animals, all things are important to them. Um, human beings are just a very small fraction of what they love about Earth because we're not all that there is. And so whatever we do disturbs the balance of all things. So that's why they come down when we start tinkering around with nuclear weapons and they do not like that. They will not allow that. And they'll mm -hmm. go in and disarm them and things of that nature. And I promise you, they won't let them go carry anything up in space either. Um, they love our planet. They love everything on it, including the insects, <laughs> everything. And they played a part in our creation and also a part of all everything here on Earth. So everything they love and everything they want to it to last forever. And they're just waiting for us to grow up and become mature enough to understand their presence. And on your connection, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you this question. I, this, this is what I ask all my guests. Okay. Why do you think they chose you? I think I was an extraterrestrial before I came here because they do treat me rather special. And my sign says it's unbelievable how much love that you get shown. Um, so I think I was probably an extraterrestrial before. Before? I don't know that for a fact, but I, I am planning on getting some past life regression done because there's a lot of questions but I sort of know in my heart and know have a feeling that I probably am and the reason they allow me to learn things as I as I get older and as I come to a better understanding of things um, I know that they won't give me too much information at one time consciously because right. they want me to enjoy my human life and they, they don't want to interfere with that. And it's very important that I maintain my human life and enjoy my experience here. Although I came here to help them, you know, to help humanity get used to the idea of ETs being a part of our life. Um, when now I know as us human beings, we, we, we tend to, um, uh, um, when we think, when, when things happen to us, right, some things scare us, some things don't, some things are, we have to, you know, wipe our eyes or is this, am I seeing this? Is this really happening to me? Now, when you're going through these, uh, the, the visitations, we'll, we'll call them that, okay? That they're, when you're going to the visitations that they're talking to you, do, do you feel, or when it first, it, I know it happened to you when you were a child, but as, as yes. I guess what they did was they gradually, gradually got you going uh, in, into getting used to seeing yes. them, seeing exactly. Yes, exactly. What they are. So, and then uh, after, as your teenage years, your 20s, when you start seeing them, you think of them as normal entities or normal human beings or almost like a like like i was scared for a long time uh, that's i was, I was scared sense. for a long time and you know i'm 63 years old and i it was in my 50s really before i was just like okay <laughs> <laughs> and you know, then I, I just, you know, I needed, I would ask, let me be conscious more. You know, I, w I want to remember, I want to do this. And I, uh, it's great. I mean, I get up there and I'm off. It's, it's hard to explain. It's like your first day at school and, you know, you're looking around and you're wanting to play with things, pick things up to make, you know, it's your affirmation that it's real, you know? Right. And, um, I've even thought about like trying to keep something, but I decided not to. And the reason why is because I don't need that affirmation. I know that they're real. I know that it's happening and I accept it. You know, it, it, it's, it is real and I'm accepting it and I am, they are a part of my life. Well, good for you. I'm glad you think that way. Yeah. Uh, so we do have a question. Uh, okay. Honey Ball says, do they show you things and, uh, that takes time for you to figure out. In other words, do they show you something? And then after a while, maybe a year later or a couple of months later, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's what they were trying to tell me. Is, they've is, showed me, they they have shown me lots of things and I've got to experience lots of things. Um, um, I've gone on craft. 
and I was with other humans and I basically said, what's going on here? What, what are we doing? And there were other extraterrestrials on board, in, including one aquatic being. And um, Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com renew to learn more. Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com renew to learn more. I had no clue really what was going on, except that we were looking for um, these beings that were in the wrong place. In other words, they were like in our dimension and they weren't supposed to be here. And we were, I was with a group of ETs that were looking for these, what we call cryptids now, but I didn't know that that's what they were called at the time it was going on, to be honest with you. And so we would go looking for them and they would um, get them and transport them back to the right place that they belong because they didn't want them here because it causes havoc and it makes people scared and they did, they didn't they didn't need to be here. And so uh, when you when you, so when you say cryptids are we are we kind of talking I'm about talking about like um, big, an, big, uh, animal beings oh, animal okay. beings Okay. You know, different types. Some look like our version, or not necessarily like a cat, but some feline type looking um, species. And then there's aquatic species. And there was right. different things. And yeah. really and truly, I was just an observer. So. You know, that's that's the thing that that I always I, I, I think about too. Sometimes it's like, I, I last podcast I did, uh, um, we talked about mermaids and things like that. So, and, and of course, and, and you got to think about this just for a minute. What a better place to hide, but in the ocean, oh, yeah. where we've I only. Think they have, I think they have bases underwater. I, as a matter of fact, I've had an experience where when they they come and get me the same female comes and gets me and we go to a we have to walk across a little like ramp thing to get in a craft that is on the water wow. so i've been in that type of things too they're asking a facebook user says do they use some kind of symbols to talk to you you know i even met a reptilian one time and when i got to the craft i looked at him and i said are you going to let me remember this? Because that, you know, for so long, they would not let me remember a whole lot. So right. I was like, are you going to let me remember this? And we shook hands or grasped hands. And he said, yes. And he had a symbol and he was in like a, a suit with a symbol on the heart side. And, but I wanted, I, I wanted to remember it. And I, saw it but i i couldn't tell you now what it was so, so it, it was actually on that side on the hard side uh, it was a symbol. yeah it was a symbol just a symbol on the material or yes or, on the material okay. yes wow so uh, so let me ask you this and he uh, was nice you know you hear all not, these bad things about reptilian but he's reptilians but i that's the only one i've ever met and like i say you, the craft that i go on there's other kinds of beings a lot of humanoids 
um, and then of course the grays, the tall grays, and then the little grays. But when you get on craft, you don't really see the little grays. They're kind of like the transport back and forth type. I hear that um, the, the little worker bees. Um, yeah. So I was going to ask you this question: What okay. what do you think that the the alien and human connection is? Since the beginning of time, in other words, they had a part in our creation. They've okay. been t- they tinkered with our DNA, and we are. They've watched us all this time. And we are very unique. They find they're fascinated with us. Uh, we're the only beings that really have all these emotions, and they find us fascinating. And we have wondrous capabilities that we don't realize that we have because of our society and our governments and the people that are in charge making these decisions, we've been dumbed down. Our, our foods and things of that nature has toxins in them. All these things take away um, our pineal gland, and which means that we'd have a hard time being um, telepathic and things of that nature. But the thing is, we have a lot of these qualities but we have to look within and bring them out again. And first off, realize we have them. We have potential. Exactly. I mean, and and because I, I talked about this on my RH Negative podcast that, you know, that they're attracted to RH Negative, but not just them, you know, others as well. But and, and they're attracted to people that are that have better frequencies or, or the, the intellect level is a little bit more up there. So that way, when they do uh, talk to you telepathically or even communicate with you, you're able to understand because you're not, you're, you're not closed minded, right? You're open minded to everything. Yes. For one. And uh, two, you have a nice aura. You're a nice person at that, right? Because why would they communicate with somebody that's mean or ugly or anything like that? They're not going to get across to anybody that way. Right. I don't think so. Um, I think, I don't know. My mother asked me the same thing. Why did, why did they pick you? (laughs) You know? And I was like, mother, I I really don't know. Other than I was probably an extraterrestrial before I came here. And, you know, I would like to answer those questions to her because she, you know, she's curious too, just like I am. But um, I don't think the blood, factor really plays into it at all to be honest i mean i'm i'm a positive a positive so far cry right. from that and my son is a positive so um you, you have to realize there's like different ets that are coming here That's you know say. and That's there's it. there's what i have the kind that i have grown up with and love and you know they're my family are right. interdimensional beings and there's a lower rim of beings. And one time I don't really know who they were, but there was some humanoid looking people around and they right. tried to take me and they got me in craft. And all of a sudden I'm like laid out on a, like a, a exam table and they're like, Ooh, we got to send her back. Oh, we can't touch her. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, and that they I, that was that, <laughs> and I thought that was unusual. And but now I've kind of like pieced it all together that that was probably I belong to the inter interdimensionals. I, I I am theirs, you know, and right. the other ones have to stay away from me. I, it, this probably because they maybe they're a higher power. They or, are. They're yes, very they power. are. So yes. they have more control over this. In other words, like yes. hey. You know, you can't do this or do that, right? Exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> this is a great conversation, by the way. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, we there's a lot of people watching, a lot of people loving it. If you guys love it, give us a heart. Please comment. We we just love this. So let's just we're gonna take a real quick commercial break. All right, about all right. maybe one minute long. Let's go one minute, and then we'll come right back. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed my trailer. So that, that was will be cool. <laughs> that, will, that will be coming out pretty soon here in a couple of weeks. I uh, hope I'm awesome. very, very excited about it. Uh, so let's continue on. 
Now, um, we're talking about how these uh, these uh, alien entities, uh, uh, different dimension, they're, they're, they are a higher power. Now, let me ask you this question. Uh, and, and I know it's we uh, you you were able to touch up on one of my podcasts that you, you we talked about a little bit. Do these extraterrestrials uh, believe in God or, or a higher power? They believe in a creator source, one creator. And it's not the way that we believe. They don't have like the Methodist, Baptist, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, They have creator source is what they call it. And, and he had, or he or it made everything. So yes, they do. So they do. Yes, they do. You know, I've, I've, I've read that too. And uh, I've, I've, touched on it a few times on, on my past podcast that they do believe in a higher power uh, or a creator is actually what they said was on, on uh, one of the stories that I did that they, they are a believer of one creator of all. So this is what, what it is. Is, is, is that pretty much what, what yes. you're saying? There? Yes. And as, as we get to a higher frequency or, you know, we ascend, which I think we're probably real close to being four and pushing on five. So as we get closer, all these things will be easier to understand. But from what I've been told or my perception of it is that when you die, you go back to source or you can either come as you can stay in a light form or you can choose to incarnate in different forms. Right. So, but some people, if they finished all the experiences that they need to experience or want to experience, they may just stay up in that higher level, a higher, you know, non-physical, I guess. Yes. There's my word. Non-physical state and just right. be a light being. Yeah. Right. It's like uh, be a part of the universe and really. Around. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Just- Right. Uh, we hear that a lot, you know, uh, from folks that talk about that, you know, uh, and, and there's nothing wrong. I mean, there's, it's a great way of, of, of thinking too, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and so when, when you experience these things, um, when they, when they contact you, right? Why contact and, and the telepathic co- uh, connections or communication? Why is that? Why, why, why talk to you uh, te- kind of telepathically, you know what I mean? To some folks? when I hear them, they yeah. have, you can tell whether it's male or female. I hear it in my head. It's, it's, it's definitely a male or female voice. And it's just like, I, I, I it just sounds like a, like a human being would be talking only they're not talking, but you can, you know, you know exactly what's going on, you know, when it's you're just fish- so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're face to face with them, it, do you, I mean, do you see any kind of movement from their faces as far as like when they're talking to you tele- telepathically, do you see like any kind of, they may nod or questions? okay, nod or something of that nature. Yeah. Or, you know, put their hand on, on my hand or, you know, certain things like that. And sometimes we put hands together like that. Right. But that's like, and, and embrace kind of thing, kind of like that. So they do everything to make you feel comfortable and th- they read your mind. You, you really can't hide anything from them. So they sort of cater to you. And I probably need it. I probably need all that uh, reassurance and love, you know. So, right. and that's probably why, because my son's relationship with them is a little different. And I wanted to tell you this. When we were in Mexico and they came to see us just about every night. And one night they came and I woke up and raised up and looked and they took their hand and on my back, on my shoulder and just kind of like lay down and, and told me this is not about you. And I laid down and I was out. And so they were there for him. So, and then when he came back, I really don't even remember waking up for that. I just know the next morning he didn't really remember whether they were there or not. But he right. does have experiences with them. Well, let me. Uh, we, 
we have. But a, I a, did. I wanted to tell you this when they came to get me, and I looked up and I was holding hands with the female gray, and it was very cold there because we were up in the mountains. And I rubbed, I rubbed her hands, and I said, "Oh, you're cold." And she didn't say anything. But then I look over at my son. He's over across the room in a different bed. And he's like constantly trying to get up. And it's so hilarious. I mean, now, not then. He was like up, up. And they and he couldn't get up. Wow. So he's in tune with them. He knew they were there. But they put him out, you know. And so then that was the night they wanted me. Well, that that was a question from one one of, from Anibal. He says, "Do they, you know, ask family members, or do they make contact? Uh, do they experience something?" You talked about your mom knowing about this as well. Now, yes, my, now, my sister too. Yes, I have a sister she, she, eleven months younger than me, and right. she's had experiences. But I, that's her story to tell. You know, right. not mine. Exactly. But do, when when y'all talk about this together. Uh, is, is that like the first conversation that comes up or is it kind of like, you know, Hey, they came the other night or whatever, because oh, or something we talk, just we talk about you? it because, well, especially, I mean, we've talked about it forever, to be honest. I mean, because trying to piece things together, you know, we've always known, uh, it's just, you know, you you try to live your normal life and, you know, you're told not to talk about it right. outside or, or just not to talk about it, you know, because it's, you just don't talk about it. So, exactly. but she and I always did on our own. Well, good. And my son and I always have. That's and good. I saw the first time that they came to get him and his brother. And that was uh, upsetting at first, but we were um, Key West we were staying at a Marriott right on the beach and we had two big beds. My ex-husband and I were in one bed and mm-hmm. three children were in the other bed, my two sons and a stepson. And I woke up and there were three grays. They like to travel in threes. And I looked and they, again, they took my push down on my shoulder and said, Here, go back. You know, right. So then they walk over and to the children. And at that point I'm laying down and I can't see, and I can't really get up or anything. They made sure of that. And I was thinking, Oh my gosh, they're going to take my children. And if that if they were young at this age. So I was like, I need to be a part of this, but that was not the agenda that, their mind is different than ours. They were, they're the ones, the little short ones, they're on a mission. They're on a test right. and they come for them. They're, they didn't come for me. So I don't get to be a part of it. And there's no negotiating or anything of that part, you know, because right. they don't have the emotions and, and the mind. Our mind is quite different than their mind. They're but, just told what to do. They're just told what to do, basically. Well, they, they stick to their test. You know, okay. they, they, their agenda is sticking to a task, a mission, you know, and, you know, it could be that they were doing an exam on them to check their, uh, to check them. Right. You know, I've had experiences where I know that they've worked on me, you know, like more than just an exam, like maybe, well, fixing some things, you know, correcting things. Um, and, you know, they were just checking on, you know, how we're evolving, uh, things of this nature, Um just checking on us. They do. That's what an exam is. It's kind of just checking up on your maturity level and your acceptance of them and, you know, just how you're progressing as a human being. How about, well, and your psyche as well, right? Like they want yes. to know if you're okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Like, mm-hmm. um, so we have a question from Ryan Keaton. Uh, he's asking, what's the most interesting piece of information that you've learned from them? How long was Neil Armstrong actually on the moon? When did Europe start speaking English? Did Marco Polo really go to China? Curiosity Stream is the streaming service for all things history, plus science, wildlife, and more. What's the real story behind the Mona Lisa? We've got that. What caused the collapse of Rome? We know. Where did we find mankind's earliest ancestor? Come find out. 
For the holidays, get the gift of Curiosity with 25% off gift cards for your curious cohorts. It's holiday shopping season at curiositystream.com slash gift. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. That human beings are unique and we are very special and we have lots of capabilities that lie dormant within our DNA. And probably a lot of that is the junk DNA, which is probably extraterrestrial as well. Right. And um, that's what makes us so unique. And another thing a lot of people don't realize where these lower level um, extraterrestrials are low level, they can only stay in the solar system. They can never become interdimensional or leave the solar system. We have the capability once we ascend in and all, we have the ability to become interdimensional. So that is why these reptil- the evil reptilian or the bad reptilians, I won't say evil, bad reptilians and the bad grace, but you have to understand there's different races of reptilians and there's different races of grace. There's at least 62 type races of grace. Some, you know, they come from different star systems and things of that nature. But the thing is these lower rim, um, and I think the Anunnaki is included in the lower rim, they cannot become interdimensional. So they want to hold us back because as long as they hold us here, dumbed down, they have control of everything and they work with the cabal and different fac- factions of our governments that really don't want us to ascend and become who we are capable of being, which is galactic human beings. And we will be well respected if we play our cards right. We accept that extraterrestrials are here and that they're not they're not here to hurt us. They're here to help us. They've always been here and they've always helped us. And if we accept that and start trying to be better humans, um, you know, trying to raise our own vibrational level by thinking positive and, you know, learning to get along with everyone and not holding up prejudice and and being racist and things of this nature. We have a lot of growing up to do it, but we're getting better. You know, it's just going to take time. And they're very patient. That's the beauty of it is that they're patient and they're just watching us evolve. Well, and then, and then you, you touched on what you were talking about before you brought that up, that the, uh, that our pineal gland, that it's, it's, they, they, they put all these chemicals, like you said, in our food, they put uh, chemicals well, fluoride, in fluoride and there's no. a hundred other things, you yeah, know, of course, and fluorides in water and a lot more fluorides in others places, mm-hmm. whatever. And everything that to keep uh, your kind of your mind not to grow any more than it is. Exactly. You know, because right. it keeps us dumbed down and at a level that they can control. And another thing is that we should not be living this nine to five, working our tails off. Um, the human experience, this is the school. This is an experience. We should be enjoying our life, enjoying our families, enjoying every aspect of it. From young to get middle age to getting old, uh, we shouldn't be living with all these hardships. We should be enjoying it. So once we accept their help, we will learn how we can slow up a little bit. And that materialistic things and working all these hard hours is causing us to miss out on our lives and our children and things. 
So with their help, we can learn all these things. So it they can do so much for us. They can help cure diseases. They can stop poverty. They, you know, right. we shouldn't even have be paying for uh, electricity or any of these things. Well, and, that's, that's very well said because, you know, they, you know, uh, because I, I, I always, I preach this a lot at home. It's like, let's go out here. Let's go do this. Let's go camping. Let's go spend some time together. We always work, 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 work. We're constantly working. Right. And, and, and and in our own, in a different way, we almost suppress ourselves. We uh, do. And and the way you were raised. It's, it's, It's the way. So we have a lot to learn, but they're here watching us. And once we accept them and we make an effort to raise our vibrational level, you know, then we can have face to face and they can help us. So. Well, I sure, I hope they, I hope they do, uh, you know, and I hope they reach more people in this, in, in the good realm and the, the, the good ones. I'm not talking about the little bad ones, those nasty ones well, that take us and stuff. And, well, there's one thing, all this stuff is kind of all laid out. I don't know everything, but I know that, Timelines are kind of laid out. Certain right. things have to happen. Um, and the way I understand it is that the first ETs that we do meet face to face, face right. may not be the interdimensionals. Right. May not. But it will happen. But I don't know. There, there are a lot of things have to fall into place, you know, I, I, and I don't know everything, but I know that there's a laid out agenda of a way it's all going to happen. It is going to happen. And I would hope that it would be them, but, and I don't know why it wouldn't be, but you know, I'm human. So I don't know everything about well, ETs. You well, know? Let's just, I mean, what we were talking about tonight, let's just kind of put it in, in a scale, right? Uh, yeah. the, the interdimensional, the the spiritual ones, they're they're up here, right, way up here. Yes. And then we got the, the the ones in the middle, right? That that you said they kind of just stay in the souls. And then we got the lower ones, you know, the ones that are actually on Earth, the ones that are, are that they can't get out nowhere, and, and different ones that that are almost like the nasty ones. What I'm trying to say is the ones yes. that, that that do these horrible things to you, or the well, ones that live in and are beneath the Earth. Well. A lot of people that say they're abducted, I've never said I'm a, I'm an abductee because right. it's peaceful. I, I enjoy it. I, I'm, I look forward to it every night. I'm like, oh gosh, I hope they come. I mean, I, I love it. You know, it, right. it's exciting. You know, you it's very exciting. But some of these people that have been abducted, and you hear all these horror stories. I even don't think it. They don't probe. I mean. Their technology, they have all this stuff. They don't have stuff like that. Um, but anyway, I think they were either adapted by the some of the lower rim, or it could have even have been um, some government people in disguise. I've heard that that has happened a whole lot too. Right, and right. and so that that puts a big fear against the interdimensionals. It makes it harder for people to accept them. We have a question out there. Uh, someone's uh, Annabelle saying, uh, are you expecting something to happen? Anytime? I know something's going to happen. I, I don't really know everything about it, but I do know that something's going to happen. Yeah. Do you think that they had uh, in our past some kind of contact possibly with, with the yes. The Egyptians with the uh, the Aztecs or uh, yes. the different the, different, the yes. Peruvians people back in the day. Did you think they had some kind of influence? Absolutely. Um, you know, a lot of things. If you go way way back, you'll see there was a lot of great ideas and a lot of technology back there. Then it just kind of like all disappeared because of these. It, lower realm extraterrestrials got involved and started changing everything. So right. when that happened, you know, they started forming religions and banking and um, time. Uh, extraterrestrials do not have time. They do not have money. 
Um, you know, these are all man-made things or someone came up with it to keep us in a working world and under a thumb. It's almost like being a slave. If you think about it, you're a slave to your job. You're a slave and you spend more hours at your job than you do with your family. And, but that's the way they want us. You know, well, I, have, I have this, this saying, I, I, I work to live. I don't live to work. So, and that's, that's my saying as far as that. And they, you know, people are talking, well, I'm going to go work for the man. I got to go work for the man, you know, because we, we, we work so hard. And like I said, because they, they, it puts us in a different place, right? Of course we, now with times of change, everything, once, once currency came into play, currency has everything to do with everything. It's trade or barter before that then currency. And then now here we go. Now uh, they a lot more people get suppressed uh, because of money issues, right, or anything like that. Yeah, but, it's really and, sad. And they taught us, like you're saying from the very beginning, you know, even back in the uh, in the day of the Egyptians, even probably before that, you know, uh, you know, m- mathematical skills, you know, that were that are still. They're still questioning today. How is it that they were so precise? Now we know that a string can be pretty precise sometimes, uh, but the intellect of putting this in this kind of scale, right? Uh, to to build these pyramids, to build these the Sphinx, you know, to build all these things, uh, the pyramids in in, in Mexico, everything, uh, you know, they 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 all connect, right? Um, well, everything's connected, but I think the pyramids were already there before the Egyptians ever came. That's my and, I said it over and over. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, there's pyramids all over the world. That's not the only place. Right. You know, we even have some in the United States. We ha- and I've, I've personally gone to the ones in South America. So, you know, I think that there was a civilization even before those that we know about that right. did those. You know, so just like there was Atlantis and think, I think Atlantis was real. And those people, either they died or they migrated over to other parts of the world, uh, over towards Egypt or Africa or, or even over in Greece or different places. You know, they, they ventured off, you know, so not all of them made it, but a lot of them did. So uh, we have a Facebook user out there asking, um, do they allow yes. you to ask questions? Yes, they do. Right yes, on. they do. And a lot of times they'll say, you already know. <laughs> wow. And I'm like, what? But they, I do know that they expect you, if they tell you one time, they expect you to remember it like they do. And humans don't quite necessarily do that so but they always tell me I do know it so right so you know and I'm like okay well I'll have to think about it then well I mean there you go with you you have not not you but just as a person your intuition you know uh, and being a human you, you know you tend to question things and you second guess you know in other words you may have a gut feeling, but then you second guess it and you just really should follow it the first time, you know, don't, don't question it, just accept it, you know? So I'm getting better, but everything takes time when it comes to this. This is not a easy process. I can tell you that, but once it, it it can, it's beautiful. Once you get to a, a certain point, it's just beautiful and it's, there's nothing like it, but there's a lot before you get there. And that's the beauty about my uh, me being an experiencer and a contactee. And I'm not the only one. I'm sure there's probably a million others like me. Right. And, you know, if I can encourage people to come out and start doing what they were came here to do, you know, we're here on a mission, then it'll be beautiful, you know, right. and we can help raise the vibrational level of the whole world you know I, my goal is i'm not talking about just here in the united states the mission is to get the, all of humanity the whole world and you know what you're you're actually starting in the right place because yes. 
right here on Alien Strand, we are worldwide. Uh, yeah. People watch our show worldwide. Yes. Even our audio podcasts are worldwide. They're out this, of this is countries. a worldwide event, and it we, you know. So I hope I'm sparking contactees. Let's let's get it going and let's raise the vibrational level. And we all do vibrate at a higher level. So right. you have all of us, but part of it. So that's a plus. Okay. But we still have to do our part in helping humanity and educating and, and getting people interested in doing their own research. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe anybody. Right. You do your own research, question everything. Exactly. And just, you know, but and then find what you're comfortable with because. Hello, it is Ryan. And I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. You, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. Exactly. Everybody's on their own evolutionary scale, their right. own um, on their own path. You know, we're all here on different emissions. Everybody came from somewhere and we all have ET in us, whether, you, you know, people like to believe that or not, but they had a part in our whole creation and um, tweaking our DNA so that we can actually have this type of conversation right now. Think about that. Look how far we've come, you know? So, and you have to know that there's, a great thing that has gone on and everything is connected and everything is by is intentional design, you know? So there's reasons for all these things and they all fit together and we just have to all work together and do our part and try to be better human beings. Exactly. And that's it doesn't why have to be done overnight, but every effort you make is a little bit closer to, to, the, to, the, goal. to, the, yes. to the goal. Yeah. And, and and I always talk about that. It's like when I when I talk to abductees or I talk to contactees, they're there it's a two it's a two different Oh, uh, I know. Yeah. Of the yeah. Apple here. So and and, the, and you're a contactee, you're not an abductee, like you talked about it earlier. Yes. So that it's it's best to to separate those two. So people out there that are actually into ufology or just started ufology and you're yeah. watching this podcast or you listen to this podcast today, just know the differences. There's differences and, 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 and I, yeah, there's definitely a difference. And I'm not saying that what they experience is not true. I'm sure it is. You know, I, I, I it's not my experience. I, I don't know. But I do know the interdimensionals and the ones that I am in relate have a relationship with are interdimensionals and they are good and loving and they care about all of us and everything, not just us, the whole planet, you know, the leaves. And and they taught me that Trees are living beings. Earth is a living being. Yes. And that trees, you can even have a communication with a tree. And then we will evolve to where we can see and do these things. But that was one thing why they wanted us to go to Mexico is because we could go in and they we could experience these things of, of realizing that even water has energy and, you know, different you can uh, expose it to different vibrations. It, 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 it changes, you know, it, it, it becomes different things. So it's amazing. I, I it, it's beautiful. It's just simply beautiful. And that's why the natives called mother earth because yes. she, she, was she is a living, living, living thing. And, living. and everything around it is like the trees, the water, the air, everything is alive. Yes. Uh, and, and they had it right the whole time. Yes, you know, exactly. The whole time. And if you're good to her, she'll be good to you. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And, so, and vice versa with human beings. Yes, <laughs> that's versa. right. It's the same, same concept, yes. Exactly. Well, we're, we, uh, I hate to close out a show, but we've already, we reached our limit. Uh, but anyway... Um, is there any final words that you'd like to, to tell anyone out there, everyone out there? Well, I'd like to say try to be a better human being. Um, 
Rome was not built in a day and they don't expect us to figure this all out overnight. It takes time. They have patience and they have faith in us. Uh, they would not be here. They would not have watched us all this time if it wasn't for a great plan, a great reason. And if it wasn't a great and wondrous plan, we wouldn't be here right now. They would have already taken over and we would not be having this conversation. So I promise you they are here to assist and help. They cannot come down here and they cannot fix everything. We are humans with free will. We have to fix our own mistakes, but big things they can step in and help. Well, good. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's that's the good thing. You know, we we if we learn from each other, just like you said, we and and love mm-hmm. each other and and just kind of work together, uh, not just in in in, in the ufology world, but as as a as a whole. Oh, yeah, just as a whole, we yeah. can make so, so much of a difference to to the world. And, and the, you know, basically, we're in a vessel, a beak suit, and if when you take that all away, we're all the same. We're all energy beings with light. You know. So we're really all the same when you get down to it. All right. So where, <laughs> where can people find you if you want, anybody wants to reach out to you? On um, Facebook. I have time for disclosure. We've never been alone. And I also have my own website. It's called timefordisclosure.com. And um, anywhere. I belong to a lot of rooms. So you can pretty much find me anywhere if it's et related i'm i'm a real fan of it so <laughs> right on well uh everybody says you did a nice job be a great job well, thank you very, I hope so. yes it was very informative we had a lot of questions out there you know uh you, you like i said you did an amazing job there was a lot of questions that you did answer you know and and uh and i'm glad that you were able to to put this out there so so people can understand what not just being like, like a, a, an abductee or a contactee, but uh, your whole experience with it all, as far as them as entities and right. good ent- being good and, entities. and they're patient. That's the beauty of it is, you know, they know us better than we know ourselves. So they are patient and they do understand that we have fear and emotions and they'll work with us. Wow. Well, that's great. Uh, we will point more more people to you, okay? Uh, Thank you. And, and, and what we'll do is, I'd really love to get you on the show again. Uh, you know, we'll we'll talk. I would love to. Yes, uh, so, this is all new, so thank you for having me. And um, you know, it's another experience that I'm getting to learn to do. So I love it. Right on! You did a great job, man. Everybody oh, just enjoyed you. enjoyed your, your 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 everything that you had to say tonight. So thank you for being on on the show thank tonight. You. We- Really appreciate you, and uh, I will talk to you here shortly. If you can hang back just for a minute, and then uh, we'll close out the show. And, and just man, this was a great, great podcast. I really loved it. Thank you for being on the show, Nancy. Thank you. All right, guys. Nancy Times, man, she did an amazing job, man. It was awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm glad that she was uh, here to talk about her experiences because these are things that that folks as well experienced because I, I've had, I've had podcasts with other folks as well. Not very many like her, but they, they have similar experiences and they go through these things as well. I believe Mari Sol is one of them as well, you know, and, and they're able to connect to these uh, spiritual entities or beings or extraterrestrials in a good way. And, and, and for them to have some kind of understanding, right. Of life and just, how to live and 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 to help, right? And to help people, uh, for us to evolve into a better species, right? Because that's basically what we are. We're the human species. We're our brothers and sisters. I don't care who you are. So, and that's what we are, as one. Like she says, we are one. So just always remember that. And I'm glad you guys were able to watch this podcast tonight. I really appreciate it. It was it was a great one. Um, this one will be on audio as well uh, tomorrow night. And uh, just catch it on, you know, iHeartRadio, you know, Spotify. You know, it'll be on Spreaker. It'll be 26, 27 platforms. You can even ask Alexa. And Alexa will play you some Alien Strand podcast. So I'm glad you guys stuck around. I appreciate you guys. Um, you know, like I said, don't forget to catch our Alien Strand extras. If you can, you can join for free or you could do the, the $5 paid one and believe me, I'm going to have a bunch of stickers to give away to, to, to paid members and I have some shirts coming up that I'll be giving to paid members and uh, uh, you know, it's it's because it's saying thank you, 
right? Because thank you to all you guys uh, that are here uh, just watching and watching Disclosure as it unfolds before your eyes and as as you hear it as well. And that's what it basically it's about. And, and we have to all work together. And by doing this and listening to our shows, we're able to work together. So until then, you guys have yourselves a good day. Have yourselves a good evening. And have yourselves a good night. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.